After experimenting with the render quality settings and doing a bunch of test renders, you'll be ready to execute an image sequence render. Let's go back into the render setup dialog. And in the previous movie, I set up the Arnold renderer to have a medium quality with camera anti-aliasing of seven. And importantly, in the system tab, I've enabled legacy 3ds Max map support. Go into the common tab, and we want to render out a sequence. We can render out a range of frames, or we can simply render out the entire active time segment, which is our five seconds of animation at 30 frames per second. I'll enable active time segment here. We're going to render the entire view. We previously set the output size to a standard definition of 854 by 480. Scroll down a little bit, and we can plug in a render file output. We did this in a previous movie, but let's just review that. Go into the files dialog here, and I want to save into the render output folder, and I've created a walkthrough subfolder for this particular five-second sequence. And I've given it a name with an underscore so that the numbers on the frames will be separated from the file name. And I've chosen PNG as the format. And in the setup here, I've configured the PNG output to be 24-bit or 8 bits per channel. All right, we've set up all of those parameters. And we're ready now to go ahead and execute the rendering. We're rendering the physical camera using Arnold. Click Render. As I mentioned earlier, these frames are taking about four minutes per frame on my current workstation. But as always, your mileage may vary, and the render time is going to be highly dependent upon the speed of your workstation. In this pop-up window here, we can expand that and get some more information about the render job and process. Once that frame is finished, we'll be able to see how long it took, and we'll get an estimate of how long the entire job will take. In this case, the job took about eight hours to render the five seconds of animation on a single workstation. Let's take a look at the finished product after about eight hours of rendering. I'm actually going to cancel out of the render job currently and go into the RAM player in the rendering menu, rendering compare media in RAM player, and open up channel A. And in the render output, I have an examples folder. And under walkthrough Arnold, I've got my image sequence that I've prepared in advance. Of course, in your case, once the job finishes, it won't be inside an examples folder. It'll just be in the render output walkthrough. I've selected that first frame, click open, and in the image file list control dialog, just click OK. In the RAM player configuration again, just click OK. And that sequence will load in. And even though it took all night to render this five seconds on a super fast computer, it's still very grainy. Just be aware that that's how it works with global illumination. If you want to have totally grain-free rendering, be prepared for a long wait. It could be an hour per frame or more for a totally clean rendering. And that's why it's a good idea to hook up with some kind of cloud rendering service, either from Autodesk or an independent vendor. And that way you can just pay to have that job rendered on as many render nodes as necessary and get your work back a lot faster. All right, that's how to render an image sequence using the production renderer. It concludes our chapter on rendering and it wraps up the entire course on 3ds Max 2018 Essential Training.